Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Average Age Plays, and welcome to one of my favorite civilizations in the game, the Bulgarians. Now, the Bulgarians have bonuses that are really neat, bonuses that you can use offensively or defensively, bonuses that really fit into at least my favorite playstyle. So, let's go and dive right in. <clears throat> if we look at their bonuses, the very first thing that you'll notice is that their militia line upgrades are free. They're free and they proc immediately. As soon as you hit the next age, you get that technology. Now, this is an awesome bonus because you can use it offensively or defensively, right? So, what some people like to do is they like to do a Dark Age rush, a drush. And they time their bonus. So they get three militia out and they start marching to the enemy base. And they'll time it so that as soon as the militia hit the enemy base, they've hit the feudal age. And those militia turn into men-at-arms. Right? So your drush is very, very powerful in that sense. And of course you can back it up with, a, uh, with the next upgrade, or the next uh, bonus. Well one of the bonuses, if we look down here. Uh, blacksmith and Siege Workshop upgrades cost 50% less food. That's maybe the next big thing for the Bulgarians. I think these two are, are some of the main ones. Uh, so what that means is you get your blacksmith up, and it's very easy to upgrade and tech up your units. So whether that's your infantry, you're talking about that drush, or you go into... Cav, if you're going into archers, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're going into archers, you can upgrade your units very, very quickly, right? Uh, so very cheaply, I should say, right? The uh, the food bonus is fantastic there. Not just for the blacksmith. Don't underestimate those siege workshop bonuses too. If you use siege workshop units, now you don't get access to the bombard cannon, but you know if you're using you know battering rams, you're using scorpions, mangonels. You're able to upgrade those units into their higher tier versions with a lot less food required. And so it's just easy to tech up with the uh, with the Bulgarians. And that just makes them a lot of fun. Right? Uh, the next thing that we see is... We see that town centers cost 50% less stone. Now, town centers normally cost 100 stone per town center. But with the Bulgarians, that drops down to only 50 stone. Now, what's really cool about that is cheaper stone requirements for the town center means that you can upgrade your economy and save stone on castles, towers, or their unique building, which we also see here in the uh, in the bonus. The Crepost becomes available for construction in the Castle Age. The Crepost is essentially a mini castle, right? Uh, it puts out... Uh, I think the DPS is actually a little bit... I want to say it's a little bit better for the Krepost, if I remember correctly. You have to go back and watch that Spirit of the Law video. But it puts out a very, very impressive amount of damage, of area control, for much less stone. It only costs 350 stone, when a castle costs 650 stone. Now, that does mean um, that... You know, you, you with the Krepos, you can only train your unique unit. That's the only production ability that it gives you. So you can't build uh, trebuchets. You don't get to research technologies out of Krepos. Uh, you can only build the unique unit. But that does mean you can build that unique unit, um, you know, with more production buildings, cheaper, you know, than it would be if you were limited to the castle, right? So it is a really cool bonus, which again... I personally like to use either defensively or offensively. Some games, I'll hit the Castle Age first, and I will rush a Crepost over to my enemy, my opponent. Uh, castle drops are one of my favorite strategies in this game. And with the Bulgarians, you know, it's much cheaper to drop a Crepost on them instead of going for the castle, right? Um, now, the only other trick about the Crepost you have to remember, too, is unlike the castle... The Krepos does not count as a building for your tech up into the Imperial Age. So you still need to either build a castle or something like a siege workshop and a monastery or a university, something like that, right? So let's uh let's 
take, I, I've talked a lot about the Bulgarians here. I want to take a look at the game state real quick before I continue on. Uh, we do see uh, Patriot Nations 10. My opponent is playing as the Burgundians. And uh, he is up a vill on me. I do have a little bit of idle TC time. Did not play the early game perfectly. Uh, this is mega random. So a part of that is just me trying to figure out what this looks like and, you know, how to play the map. Uh, but I decide, again, whenever I do an Average Age Plays video, and I, or I'm thinking about doing a video, I like to use strategies that are typical of that civilization. Right? So... Uh, I figure if I'm playing Bulgarians, I've got to try the Drush. So I don't time it perfectly. Normally what you'd want to do is time it so as soon as your uh, your Militia hit, they're upgrading into Men-at-Arms. You've hit the Feudal Age. I'm not doing that in this case. But what I am doing that is so fantastic is he's scared off Bonjour. by my Militia. So he's running away. I've pushed my opponent off of Berries. I've pushed them off of Gold. He does have a barracks up, but he does not want to invest the resources into, into the gold. So, right now, I've got a lock on this on these berries, this gold. I'm going to push him off of the wood in a second. This is a really, really great uh, situation to be in, right? As far as, you know, executing a drush, you would, you'd love to have resources like this. Even though I never got a kill. I didn't get a kill on any vills, but uh, I am really blocking him off of resources. Now, the unique unit for the uh, Bulgarians is the Conic. Oh, and I, I, did I mention already? Let me just say this real quick if I didn't. Blacksmiths also work faster. So not only are, the, are they cheaper, but the team bonus is the Blacksmiths work faster. So that also means that if you're in a situation where you're saying, boy, you know, I forgot to get these texts. I need these texts quickly. You click them, and it's, well, it's not immediate, but it is so much faster than with any other civilization. So... Don't underestimate that bonus either. I consider the Bulgarians the blacksmith sieve. And uh, they're really, really good at that. So, their unique unit, which again, I love, is the Conic. The Conic is a cavalry unit that when it dies, the rider survives and picks himself up. So it's kind of like a, a half knight, half uh, you know, swordsman unit. I made a mistake here, by the way. I think I should have kept these guys as soon as I hit Feudalage. I should have kept them there. I should have locked them in. But I was worried that maybe he had resources back here. I wanted to try to find those resources to do damage. You know, keep keep them off of resources. But it turns out, I think keeping them where they were would have been the right call. Because now he's going to get on gold. Anyway. Um, not that I could have known that. You know, my scout, I think, died early on. So I didn't get to see what was back here. That's the power of... Uh, intelligence and, and, you know, reconnaissance. Anyway, right now, 27-27, the Vils are even. I'm going back to try to do some damage here. Um, but the Conic, a fantastic unit, half knight, half swordsman. Uh, just a really great, and it, it requires a lot of technology, because you want to up, get the attack upgrades, you want the cavalry armor upgrades, and the infantry armor upgrades. But, the Bulgarians are the Civ to do that, right? And here I'm getting some kills. Uh, he does get a tower up, though. And he will take out my my militia on the attack. <clears throat> so anyway, the Conic. I love the Conic. It's one of my favorite units in the game. And uh, it does require a lot of blacksmith upgrades, but the Bulgarians are the sieve to do that. Cheaper blacksmiths, faster blacksmith. Uh, cheaper blacksmith decks, faster blacksmith decks. So... It's a really, really great civilization. Now, oftentimes what I'll do, and, and this is why I'm doing the stable, is I like going, uh, you know, sometimes I'll do the drush, but I like going knights. Now, you might ask, Kaiser, why not archers? You were saying earlier, like, don't, don't do archers as Bulgarians. Why? Because the Bulgarians have the worst archer line in the game. In these Average Age Plays videos so far, I've not spent a lot of time going over just the generic tech tree, right? Kind of like, again, in a Spirit of the Law video. Uh, I don't typically do that, but if you pull up the tech tree and you look at the Bulgarians, you will see that, one, they don't get access to any of the Archer line upgrades. So you cannot upgrade into Crossbow, you can't upgrade into Arbalest, you are stuck with the Feudal Age Archer. And then on top of that, 
they also don't get the final archer armor upgrade. So even the Spanish, which are the only other civilization in the game that um, does not get access to crossbow, they're stuck with the archer line, even they have a better archer line because they get the full, uh, you know, the full uh, blacksmith, you know, armor and attack upgrades and all that. Bulgarians don't even have that. So uh, it's one of those strategies that I think would be very out of the box if you decided to go, um, you know, Bulgarian archers. Maybe it would work as like an archer rush because they definitely would not be expecting it if they know anything about the Bulgarians. But, as far as a long-term plan, you don't want to go archers. That would be a very bad idea. If you need you need um, range and, you know, piercing damage, that all that jazz, right? Uh, go with scorpions instead. That, I think you should consider scorpions. Or, you could also do cav archer. Uh, that, that is an option for the Bulgarians. But, uh, you'd have to do one or the other of those. Don't do, uh, don't do just the regular archer one. So I get the sense, even though I did good damage, and I'm five bills up, I, I am worried that he's going to hit Castle Age before I do. And sure enough, Patriot Nations uh, hits the Castle Age at about 19 minutes, I, whereas I'm just starting. So I am a little worried. This is one of those areas where I think I've made a misplay. I'm looking at my wood, and I'm saying, okay, I'm, I want to put down a Town Center when I hit the Castle Age and all that. But... I should have spent the time, I think, to try to wall up. I don't know. Would it even let me wall up on this terrain? I'd, I'd, I'd have to double check that. It, it may not have let me. That might be why I decided not to wall up. But I think walling up would have been a good idea to block off at least some of these choke points and you know just try to keep my people safe. I'm getting a scout out because, again, if, uh, if you see... Let me see. Right here. I had access to very little information. And so, just getting a scout. Try to try to scope out your map. You want to have an understanding of how is this game going to play out in the long run. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want to be like me here, stuck in the dark. My opponent has done a better job scoping out what his base looks like, what my base looks like. Because his scout didn't die like mine did. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Burgundians. That's actually going to be our next video, but Patriot Nation's here giving us a little bit of a preview. Uh, the Burgundians, they're impressive, man. They get Cavalier in the Castle Age. So, Cavalier is normally an Imperial Age unit, but they get them in the Castle Age. Now, fortunately, I kind of predicted. Burgundians are Cav Civ, that's typical. So, I get Spearmen out in advance expecting them. But here's the problem. We have Cavalier, which is normally an Imperial Age technology, an Imperial Age unit, versus my Spearmen, which are Feudal Age. I have not researched the Castle Age upgrade for them yet, right? So, yeah, the Spearmen have the Anti-Cav bonus, but it's still Feudal Age versus Imperial Age, and as we see here, um, it's not looking so hot. And that was, by the way, I also did my fighting before my infantry armor upgrade came in. And that was a mistake, too. So, he's getting some early pressure on me for sure. I'm doing what I can to stall him. I've got some knights, which I know. Two knights will not beat four cavalier, right? But I'm just hoping to try to keep him busy. You know, just distract him, get him to fight the knights or, or chase the knights instead of killing my villagers. I am very, very worried about this. Yeah, I, I wanted to go into Knights and attack him, but instead he got the first punch. So, again, pay attention. Now, while all this is going on, what's in the back of my mind, too, is uh, keeping the economy going. You know, because he's raiding me. I win or lose on the basis of, do I keep my economy alive? As he's flooding me with more Cavalier. This is so scary. And this is where I know, I've, I've got to get more Spearmen out. More Spears. That's my only hope. Yes, even... Yeah, I need to upgrade them to Pikemen. 
as soon as I can. But I've only got one barracks up, and that right there is a huge mistake. You know, as soon as I realized, like, he's flooding me with knights, I should have realized then. I need more barracks. I need them quicker. You know, so, so that way I can pump more spearmen out. I can get them upgraded. I need to make this happen. So, yeah, he's got eight cavalier on the field. Boy, is that scary. And again, Imperial Age. Now, he does not have his Castle Age armor, so that's a little bit of a saving grace. This is a, a moment, one of the lucky moments of this match. I get the castle up. Uh, what I need to do, and I get it in the nick of time, I need to wall in my vills in order to keep them safe. And fortunately, I'm able to do that. Um, because if, if he if he could he could just swoop in, if I didn't wall that up, he could have just swooped in, killed the vills. If the castle does not go up, that would have been a problem. Right now... I am feeling very, very rough, uh, because he, I feel like I'm on the back foot, I hate feeling like I'm on the back foot, but I am, I, I'm pumping out knights to do nothing but stall, they're, they're destined to die, but it's just a matter of stalling, I, I think one of the saving graces is he's only just now getting his second town center up, I've had two TCs up for a while, so, he is actually head in bills, but not that much. After all the raiding, all the killing that he's done with his cavalier, it's not been that bad. Yeah. Fortunately, I've got a castle up, and that castle takes out one cavalier. Kind of scares him off a little bit, which I think is, is a good move. Now what's about to happen, you'll see I have 432 stone. If you remember... Uh, Krepos only cost 350 stone. So I'm thinking, boy, alright, I've, I've kind of got this secured thanks to the castle. Uh, I'd like to maybe put down another uh, Krepos. I want to use it defensively, right? We were talking about that earlier. Finally. Finally. I should have done this ages ago, but I finally commit to that second barracks. <clears throat> He's uh, destroying the stable. I'm okay with that. I, I... I would rather have him destroying... Stables and just sort of buildings I'm not that worried about versus, uh, you know, killing my vills and, and raiding me. So, feeling alright so far. I'm actually ahead in the vill count, so I think as focused as he is on the attack, I'm guessing that he's maybe behind on, um... Oh, watch this. I wall up everywhere except between the Krepost and the, and the Blacksmith. There is a little hole there. He swoops in. He kills all of these vills. So, I lose a bunch of vills there. It was a real bummer. Um, the good news is his guys are kind of stuck. So, or they were stuck. So, this gives me time to chase them off. Take a look at that eco Katie. He has killed 14 vills to my four. That's pretty good. But, on the flip side, I have much better idle TC time. And even after all of that raiding... I have less idle eco time. Yeah, this is scary. Uh, uh, one of the things that I think was fortunate is uh, he just goes all in on Cav. Now that could have worked, I think, with a little bit more aggression. I think he might have destroyed me. But fortunately... I see that that is his strategy, so I decide to go all in, all hands on deck, Spearman. I kind of threw away the Spearman I had there. Maybe I got a kill or two, but... Uh, fortunately, I do have the crit post up, so... I think that's going to scare him off. Yeah. More... Speed Pikeman, there we go. Yeah. So I will go heavy into Pikeman, because that's all he's doing. He's not mixing up his strategies at all. Because the Burgundians are one of those sieves that are kind of, um... They are kind of... A one... I, I say a one-trick pony, right? Their thing is cavalry. That's their bonus. That's what they are good at. Now, they have options. You can go archers with Burgundians. You can go, you know, infantry with Burgundians. 
That's the thing. With every civilization, every one-trick sieve still has options. You are not locked into one sieve. But uh, they definitely, they, all of their bonuses are tied into their cavalry. So he's decided to go, you know, all in knights, all in cavalier. I decided to try something. A little desperate, but I send two vills forward. I want to try an offensive Kripos, like I was saying earlier. You can do a Kripos defensively or offensively. Unfortunately, I hit right as he's getting his castle up. And no, my five spearmen are not enough to take out his 12 cavalier. And so, this Kripos will go down. The saving grace is that um, I'm able to delete it, you know, without too much stone lost. So... You know, it's not the it's not the worst thing in the world. It was it gave me important information, so that was a bonus. But I lose a little bit of stone, I lose two bills, I lose my pikeman. Rough situation. I do have seven conics out. And these conics. You know, again, I've got all I've got the Castle Age armor or attack upgrade. I've got the Castle Age infantry upgrade. I do not yet have the Castle Age cav upgrade. Right now, we have Patriot Nations teching up into the Imperial Age. Seven Vils ahead, even army, and again, that's kind of an Imperial Age army, so I'm going to go ahead and say Patriot Nations has the lead right now. The score is not lying to you. Meanwhile, I'm throwing up two Siege Workshops because I'm wanting to take advantage of that Bulgarian... Uh, you know, Siege Workshop. They have a great Siege Workshop. They do not have access to the Bombard Cannon. But otherwise, you know, they have a full uh, Siege Workshop tech tree. And, again, the cheaper Siege Workshop techs. So, I'm wanting to take advantage of that. And I'm a little bit worried. Uh, again, there's a lull in the action. And that has me worried. I don't know what's going on, but it's scary. So, again, fortunately, I have a Krepost and I have the castle. I'm using both to produce conics because I get the feeling like I need military on the field. You know, and I, I'm taking up to Imperial now myself, so a little bit behind my opponent. Yeah, right now he's five ills up. Now, this is an important moment here. Uh, we get into a fight. Yeah, and I and I pull back because I know his his uh, cavalier, at least numbers wise, if nothing else, his cavalier beat my conics, right? But I did see him trying to put down a castle, so I know that a castle is going up. <clears throat> and again. I think you've heard me say this before. Whenever I hit the Imperial Age, the first thing on my mind is I need to try to win the Treb War. Actually, I try to stop this. So I'm thinking, all right, if I, I pull my Conics back. Now I've got a group of Conics and I have Spearmen. Now, right now it's 77 Vils to 71. The fight breaks out. I'm killing a bunch of Vils, trying to shut them down. I've got Scorpions as that quote-unquote archer backup, right? Now, this castle, it will go up. I can't stop it. But he did have to sacrifice a lot of villagers to make that happen. And now I have the vill lead by nine vills. And I killed a fair number of cavaliers as well. So I'm going to call that a win. This is a pretty big moment. Remember how I was talking about getting Trebs out right away? Well, see, the problem is I have no wood. Why do I have no wood? Because I'm going all in into Halberdier as I get that upgrade. I know. It's like the only thing he's doing is Cavalier. It's Knights. And so when you have an opponent... Now, you have to be careful. But when you have an opponent that's going all in on one strategy, just build the counter. If he's going all in... He's, and he's getting the Paladin upgrade. So, if he's going all in Paladin, just build that counter. I'm going Halberdier. <clears throat> now, the scary thing about that is, if you invest everything you've got 
into Halberdier. And he does a tech switch on you, and all of a sudden he hits me with archers or infantry, whatever. I am in big, big trouble. And that's why I, I'm scared, like, early on. I, I, that's why I was so worried about just massing Pipen, because I was worried he's going to tech switch on me. But at this point, I've realized, no, he is doing nothing but Paladin. So, I'm going heavy into the Halberdier. I recognize that that trash army is my necessary response to what he's doing. I have a load of food. Not a lot of gold. So I'm actually, yeah, this is what I do. I sell a bunch of food to get gold, and then I use that in order to... I want to say... What I thought I was doing was getting the blacksmith decks. What I need to do eventually is pick up the blacksmith decks. I need the cav armor. I need the infantry armor for the imp. There it is, finally. Plate mail armor coming in. Because I need to make sure that he can't just cut through my halberdier like a knife through butter. If he can, it doesn't give them time to apply their anti-cavalry damage. But when the armor's there, that means that they survive longer, and every hit is doing more cav damage. And here we go. Got the trebs out. That's another reason I was selling food to get that treb war going. All right, now he's got one treb. I've got two. I should win this. This is a key moment right here. He's fighting uphill. I hate it. But sometimes you just got to take that battle. I'm trusting that my anti-cav damage will be enough. Good news and bad news. Well, actually, really, just good. Yeah. So, he destroys two of my trebs. That's the bad news, right? The good news is he threw away a massive amount of his army in order to make that happen. His own treb went down, so I still have treb numbers right now. And I still have a standing army. He's kind of having to rebuild an army back here. This is huge. I actually have momentum. And I'm up 10 bills. So I'm, I'm actually starting to feel... At this moment when I'm playing the game, I'm feeling very trepidatious. Very concerned. But, um, it's a good moment. Now, one other thing I should talk about when it comes to the Bulgarians are their unique technologies. They have two amazing unique technologies, which, I will go ahead and spoil this, I did not get either of them in this game. And that's a mistake, because I could have used both of them. In the, I want to say it's the, yeah... In the Castle Age, they have a unique technology called Stirrups, and it lets their cavalry units attack 33% faster. Now, right now, other than Halberdier, which is my main focus, and that's probably why I didn't get the upgrade, because it's focused on Halberdier, but Conics are my, my backup plan, my gold unit. And um, getting that Stirrups upgrade means that they're attacking 33% faster. That would help out a lot uh, in my battles against the Paladins. So... I really should have picked that upgrade up. Then again, you could argue, I don't think I ever get the elite upgrade for the Conics this game. So, um, I don't know that, maybe I didn't invest enough into Conics in the first place for that to be worth it. But I think it would have been. I think at some point I could have picked up the elite upgrade, picked up stirrups, and you have a really, really impressive calf force. Ah, and there it goes. <coughs> so right now, I'm throwing down a second castle, which again, it's easier to afford because I have uh, the cheaper town centers, so they didn't cost as much stone. Um, right now, there's kind of a... I don't know what you want to call it. It's, it's Treb versus Treb. Who's going to win the Treb War? I do have more trebuchets than he does, but most of them are actually here in the back. These guys have kind of been... Uh, stalled. Uh, so right now it's basically my one treb versus his three that just hit. He's got the numbers. Neither one of us really wants to engage the other. Because if he attacks me, my halberdier will wipe out his paladin. But if I attack him, well he's got the castles defending his trebs too. So I'm a little concerned about that. 
my scorpions accidentally advance and they get destroyed. Even though I have picked up the heavy scorpion upgrades, so I'm using that Bulgarian Siege Workshop bonus. Finally, I remember my trebs. This gives me treb advantage, and I think this one will go down too, if I remember right. It's about to go down. So I decide, this is my moment. I, I am going to go ahead and commit. You know, I'll use my conics to try to get some damage in. All right, that's one treb down, two trebs down. We've got a third coming, and here come the halberdier. Now, he if he's saying, boy, if you're going to attack my trebs, I'm going to attack your trebs. The battle kicks off. Of course, he will wipe out trebuchets. The question is, you know, what, what will it cost him? If he throws away his entire army to make it happen, I call that a win. Right? I still have a trebuchet up. But he's got two trebs! Three, three trebs. Oh, boy. And this is when I realize something. I say, wait a minute. Why don't I just go ahead and attack the trebs with my pikemen? Because, yeah, I'll lose some pikemen to the, or halberdier, to the castle, but they're trash units. They are easily replaced, and I am massing up more halberdier. So, you know, it, it's not that big a loss if I lose, you know, a couple of halberdier. And, and if I'm killing paladins and taking down trebs and just stalling him, because I could tell he was getting momentum, that's worth it, right? I do want to highlight again. I've got five barracks. That's good. I think I could have put more down. I've got a 1, thousand, fifteen hundred wood floating. Uh, yes, I am using that wood for siege units. I'm using it for more trebs, but I think I could have put down more production and, and gotten even more halberdier out. But I am pretty happy at this point with you know the the big number of halberdier that I have. Here, here I go. I'm gonna just decide to take out these trebs with the with the halberdier. What's he going to do? He's going to attack me with Paladin, and the Paladins will die. So, you know, win-win. I'm, I'm more than happy to take that fight. Yeah, he's trying to protect the trip, but look at the, Wow, look at all of the gold, all of the food down the drain for Patriot Nations 10. Boom. That's his last trip down. I have four trebuchets on the field, three more coming out. I'm pushing him back. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. I got to pause this. Here's a moment. Uh, actually, let me, let me play. So I am moving along. And I see, huh, that's funny. That's not a normal unit. What is it? Who's this guy? Who is this Flemish militia? Oh, no. And it is right at this moment. Now, in case you don't know, the Burgundian unique technology in the Imperial Age is called Flemish Revolution. It turns all of your villagers into Flemish Militia, which are essentially uh, champions, right? They have a little bit of a anti-cav bonus. They look like spearmen. They have a little bit of an anti-cavalry bonus, but in a lot of ways, they're basically swordsmen, right? <clears throat> so I see this and I say, oh no, he's hit the button. He has, take a look at this, take a look at this up here. He has eight villagers right now to my 130. So economy-wise, I'm great. He has 112 army on the field to my 46, right? I'm worried. Yeah, I'm worried. Uh, so I see it. Fortunately, I catch it before he hits me, and I realize I need a response right now. One of the best responses to Flemish Militia, and that's great if you can stonewall your base, they have a hard time breaking through, but one of the best responses is infantry. And I was thinking, oh no, I haven't upgraded my swordsman line. I, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm... This is, this is a tragedy. And then I remembered that Bulgarian bonus, your militia line upgrades automatically throughout the ages. Now that is, again, an offensive bonus. We saw that with the Drush. It's also a defensive bonus in a situation like this where you suddenly realize, yeah, I need, I need militia or I need, I need champions or, or you know, two-handed swordsmen on the field right now, right? And so any second now, it, I think at first, yeah, let's see here, I, I've got scouts queued up because I was going to go raid him. And that's actually what I'm doing. I, I'm deciding to raid him, try to keep his economy down. But yeah, this is, I, this is uh, tower defense mode. I know that if I can just survive, I think I probably won this because he has to sacrifice his entire economy for this. But 
Flemish Revolution is often an I win now button. Uh, I've got the scorp I've got heavy scorpions out. They're doing what they can to try to whittle away at these Flemish militia. Here we go. Two-handed swordsmen finally coming out. I'm trying to mass them up, mass up enough of them to, uh, you know, hopefully deal with these Flemish militia. Normally, archers would be a great choice against them as well. Uh, archers are, of course, a classic anti-infantry choice, but once again, really not that good of a call against uh, you know, for the Bulgarians because they don't have a good archer line. What they do have are good scorpions. I've already teched into the heavy scorpions. I've decided to go heavily into them. Now, I wish I had kept my two-handed swordsmen alive and sort of served as a meat shield to protect these scorpions. I think that would have made their, them even more effective. Take a look at this number. He's got 70, 75 Flemish militia. All right, my castle goes down. My town center will go down. He is definitely doing damage. He has killed 60 vills. I have killed 18, right? So, yeah. But you could also say he has killed, you know, uh, however many, 100 plus vills to get this Flemish militia army. So, again, it is kind of whittling things away. He is winning these fights, but these are uh, Pyrrhic victories. He's slowly but surely losing this mass, and I get the feeling if I can just whittle away this army, then I've then I've won. So even though I'm sweating bullets, um, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that maybe I actually have victory in my grasp here as I move out with another scout force again, just trying to keep his economy. Uh, stunted while I wipe out these uh, Flemish militia. Yeah, so again, are these fights I'm going to win? No. And this is, one more time, this is where Begains would have been amazing, and I, I wish I picked it up, because then I could be talking about how awesome it is, and you'd be seeing it in action in this fight. Begains is the Imperial Age uh, Bulgarian technology. It gives your infantry line an additional, I want to say it's five, yeah, plus five melee armor. That would have been so amazing in helping out with this uh, push, because that means Flemish militia are doing way less damage, which of course means I'm doing way more damage, and I'm able to push them back so much more effectively, right? But even so, it's a missed opportunity. The castle went down, so I couldn't really research it. You know, then, I'd, I have, I would have had to have predicted it and researched it earlier. I was a little slow on realizing that infantry would be my call. But, he has separated out his... He got his militia away from his trebs, so... For some reason, they're not attacking. Attack. I don't know what's up with this, but it, it, it takes me a minute. But eventually, I will take down those trebs. It's not no attack stance. It's something about them being at a choke point, and I clicked the wrong one or something, but now they're moving in, and they take out the trebs. So, at this point... I have 31 two-handed swordsmen to his 24 Flemish militia, and they're split up. I, I feel like I've survived. I still have 67 villagers. And, again, he only has 34 Burgundian villagers. He has essentially no gold. He's kind of low on food and wood, so... Not that I know that. I mean, I, I definitely am still sweating bullets. But I've got two town centers up. Thank you, cheaper TC bonus. So, I'm working on kind of you know, coming alive here, right? Now, I do... See, let, me, let me pull this up here. If I were to... What I do happen to see, thanks to the scouts, and I, I noticed this... Whoa, boy. Look at all these archery ranges. So, I kind of figure... I realize... He is planning on teching into something ranged. I don't know if he's got the gold for crossbowmen, or I don't know if it's cav archer, 
or if he's just doing skirmishers, which, again, we, we figure that is what he's doing. He's run out of resources. If we look at the map, he actually has no more gold left on his side of the, of the field. I have gold still in my base. So, you know, everything that he's thrown at me thus far, all of those paladins, all of those, uh, yeah, I mean, even the, the trebuchets, the Flemish, well, the Flemish militia cost gold research. But point is, he is now out of gold. And that Flemish militia was supposed to be the I win button. So now what? Right? Well, now he's thinking, okay, I've got to go into this late game trash fight. I'm going to go into Light Cav and Elite Skirmisher, and I hope I can end the game there. But if one side has gold and the other side doesn't have gold, everything else being equal, the side with the gold will win. The gold army will beat the trash army. Right? So I see the archery ranges. My hope is that I can like knock them out before he can really build the units he wants to build. I'm going on offense. Do be careful, by the way, when you are using mangonels or onagers, uh, that you don't shoot your own units. That is a concern. Now, we're going to see this in a little bit. I, I don't remember exactly when this comes in. Yeah, look at this. Watch. Boom. I take out two because I accidentally shot myself. Uh, I have a thousand food. I'm working on the gold, getting that collected as well. And, um, you know, I'm using Manganel. I, why? Because I saw the archery ranges. I figured he must have some huge skirmisher force. I want to have a response to that. Bulgarians... Uh, of course, I have the Great Blacksmith upgrades. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the Siege Workshop upgrades. Mangonels are a good response to a Skirmisher Force. Here he goes. He's going to raid me with Light Cav. Fortunately, I am using the gold. I'm building my army back up, back at home. I do have Conics that I'm massing. And they should be effective enough at dealing with uh, Town Center. So, I'm just trying to wipe out his industry. I've got the... Uh, the two-handed swordsmen are going to go in and just absolutely demolish this town center. You know, I'm, I might lose, I don't know, one, one unit. Yeah. I, in the late game, you can you can just go in with infantry and absolutely wipe out a town center. So here we see he's he's raiding me with the scout cav. He's he's doing what he can, but I've got a con. Uh, I'm sorry, Krepost up again. Thank you, Krepost. Basically, mini castle protecting my vills. That's huge. And again, my gold line units will uh, wipe out his force. He, he's desperate for gold, so he sent vills to try to try to do what he can. But it's not enough. I am massing up halberdier to respond to this. Right. Meanwhile, back at home. I mean, what do you what do you do? Ye yes, two handed swordsman will beat. Light Cav. So I think we're in a situation where I think what he'll want to do Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to destroy these production buildings because I want to try to keep his trash horde to a minimum, right? He's going to try to rush my Manganel. Now I could have sworn that I picked up the Onager upgrade. Yeah, so, okay, so he, he destroys my siege, but he throws away almost his entire scout force in, in response. So again, I, I have a stronger economy. Um, I'm a little worried because the score still has him ahead, but I know a lot of that's probably legacy points from what he accomplished earlier. I think I've got the momentum. I still have the gold. You know, so... Uh, and then I, I realize, here's, here's my situation. I'm realizing, oh, this is turning into a post-imperial trash fight. I hate those. I am really bad at that. I have gold. I need to find a way to end this game now. Because if it turns into who can mass up scouts more and raid each other better and that kind of thing, maybe I'd win it. But boy, I have a bad track record with it. I'll just put it that way. And then I get the idea. Wait a minute. Bulgarians have the amazing Siege Workshop. Bulgarians have the cheaper upgrades. I've lost my castle. 
But instead of doing the whole trebuchet thing, what if I go into battering rams? And that's my game plan. I am going to mass up battering rams. And you can see I'm actually putting out a third and a fourth siege workshop. I'm going to mass up battering rams, and I'm going to hit him with everything I've got and try to win this game. So I'm massing up conics. Again, it is a shame that I don't have the elite upgrade. I don't have the uh, stirrups upgrade. That would have been amazing. But what I am doing, uh, I, I'm using what I've got. I'm using all of my... Yeah, here he goes. He's now raiding me on this side. And I decide, I mean, I've got 24 Halberdier. I'm going to move them out, see if I can get some kills. At first, I'm worried because if he had raided me here and, you know, killed my battering rams before I could even upgrade them, that would have been, it would have really slowed my momentum down, right? But um, I ultimately decide, all right, I, I think I'm safe here. There's a risk, but I'll see if I can save my town center. Because I would really like to not lose that TC. Look at, by the way, I, of course I don't know this in the game, but Patriot Nations has one gold. He has nothing. So it's all trash for him right now. Yeah, so my Vils, they're all going to die. Uh, that evens out the economy. So a good raid for him, right? Yeah, but that does mean the scout force will go down. And the elite skirms that he has, and I, I do believe I noticed this, uh, they have no armor. So they're going to die pretty quickly uh, if my conics find them. Now, unfortunately, they don't. But I have the conics ready as a response to the skirmishers. I have the halberdier as my defensive response to scouts. And I need to put the pressure on him. I have capped ram upgrade has already come in, and now I've got the siege ram upgrade right behind it. Thank you, Bulgarian cheaper techs. I love this trait. This is not common as an Imperial Asia, at least not in my experience, not at my elo. Uh, but I love pulling out a surprise like this. Uh, he would probably expect two or three trebs, and he'd rush the two or three trebs with the scouts, and... You know, is that that's how it typically goes. But we're going to do something a little bit different. Here we go. 12 battering ramps on the field, flanked by Halberdier and Conix. Of course, I could have garrisoned some of these siege ramps with the Halberdier to make them go faster, and then you pop them out as soon as the cav arrive. But, you know, I'm not that worried about it. The skirmishers do nothing because battering rams have 195 pierce armor, right? So that's like one one damage a piece per shot. Uh, the, the scout would be the threat because they don't have a lot of melee armor. They actually have negative melee armor. But <clears throat> a couple of scouts are not enough to deal with 12 siege rams. Here we go. These castles are going down. He's picking up hoardings, but that'll only stall out the inevitable. He actually does have more economy, but almost all of it is idle. He doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, I'm keeping my bills busy. He has double the idle TC time. You know, more idle eco time. And ultimately, because he drained out his gold, he was forced into a trash situation and uh, just was not really able to raid and mass up an army like he wanted to, he called the GG afterwards. And that was game. So, there's a lot that goes into this game. Uh, I think a big part of it is simply, um, you know, being able to use your gold efficiently. He, early on, he, he put so much gold into the Paladins, into the Trebs, into his early pressure, but I was able to respond to that with trash, you know, food, food and wood units, uh, and, and was able to kind of push him back. So, he was running a gold deficit, eventually completely ran out. I had gold on my side, which allowed me in the late game to make a push like this. Um, 
But also, again, those Bulgarian bonuses. Every single one of these traits came in use. The Militia line upgrades are free. I use that offensively in my Drush to kind of push him off early, and I think stalling him helped out a lot. Uh, he, if I didn't, he would have hit me with Paladins earlier, and, uh, I'm sorry, with Cavalier earlier, and that might have made the difference. That might have been game. Um, but then also I was able to use it defensively. As soon as I saw those Flemish Revolution, you don't want to use Knights against them because they do have an anti-Knight bonus. So I couldn't use my Conics, right? That's where the, uh, the Two-Handed Swordsman came into play. And I was able to use that bonus very effectively there in order to push back the big red button that is Flemish Revolution. Uh, town Center is costing 50% less stone. Yeah, that helped me out a lot. It meant that I was able to put down more Krepos, more defenses. And I believe that, you know, the Krepos and the castles throughout my base really uh, curbed his desire to raid me. Now, part of that is just psychological. I think if he had taken his scouts and just pushed past, he could have gotten into my food economy back here and, and done, you know, who knows how much damage. But... You know, being able to secure my gold here, secure my resources here, and, and just keep him from raiding willy-nilly, thanks to the Krepos. It's an incredible bonus. Um, you know, so the cheaper town centers helped me put out more defenses, which helped keep my economy alive, right? Uh, I've already talked about the Krepos and how useful that was, not just defensively, but also as a way to produce conics. Conics proved essential in this game. Now, there were so many bonuses I missed out on. The Elite Conic upgrade, the Stirrups upgrade at the castle. But even then, just using Conics as a response to, even in the light game, the response to the Skirmishers, that's exactly what I needed. And frankly, I didn't need those upgrades in order to use Conics as a response to the Skirmishers. Just having that mobile force that when the Conic dies, it becomes a Swordsman. It goes right back into battle. An amazing, amazing unit and a great bonus. Um, the Blacksmith and Siege Workshop upgrades. I used both of those this game. Uh, I picked up the... I ended up picking up the Castle Age armor for the Cav, the Imperial Age armor for the Infantry, which I needed. And and, I, and again, I think the way this game played out, Halberdier were the MVP. And... In fact, let me see this here. I've got, yeah, like 170 Halberdier is what I researched. Um, and... Yes, like that's that's where I needed my Imperial Age techs. Uh, with the Conics, I think that not that I should have picked up the chain barding armor, especially given the cheaper, you know, blacksmith techs. But uh, at the same time, the way that I used the Conics, I, I used them pretty effectively without maybe over committing to them. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Siege Workshop, likewise, I researched the capped ram and the, the siege ram upgrades to win the game to scare them off. I, earlier, I got the Heavy Scorpion upgrade, and I'm able to do that with a lot fewer food requirements than normal, right? Uh, the, the faster working blacksmith upgrades. Yeah, that was huge. There was actually a couple of moments. I wish I could rewind and show you. A couple of moments where I was... I think it was around the time when he was raiding me with the, um, the Flemish Militia, where it's like, boy, not only do I need you know, my two-handed swordsman, but I need them upgraded as much as possible. And I want to say it was around then when I was clicking my Imperial Age upgrades and they came in that much faster, like just when I needed them, that bonus came in handy, right? Conix, amazing unit. And again, I do wish I picked up the gains and stirrups, uh, that, but I leave that for you as, you know, maybe an unrealized opportunity for even more Bulgarian power. They are an amazing civilization, an amazing force. I highly recommend them. Uh, average age plays, Bulgarians. Th this is a sieve to learn. I love them. You will too. But that's it for me this time. This is the Iron Kaiser with the Bulgarians signing out.